Okay. Be cute here. Listen to me. Why is it not curly anymore? That side's curly. Okay, first step is to always draw up a plan. That was so vague. I'm just curious, you know. Of course, we can add some floor poofs too if we want to. Oh my God, I'm so excited by this solve. Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. And welcome back to another slightly modified episode of Design and Conquer. This is the series where our friends and viewers send in their spaces that need some major design help. So we come up with a design for the space, but then leave them to get their hands messy while they bring our concepts to life. It is all about teamwork in Design and Conquer. Today's episode is a tiny bit different. We'll be virtually talking to our Conquerors and coming up with design, but you guys are gonna have to make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss our next Design and Conquer virtual episode where the designs are revealed. And make sure you guys stay tuned because in today's episode, there's gonna be some fun surprises along the way that I'm so excited for. Okay, so first up, we're gonna chat with Kira. She lives in Boise, Idaho, and actually just bought her very first home all on her own, which congratulations, that is a huge, huge, awesome accomplishment. When she's not working, she loves crafting and playing her piano, so she has a spare room that she'd love to turn into kind of like a zen music room. She's a fan of all things thrifted and vintage, which so are we, so I'm excited to hop on this call and talk a little bit more about the space she wants done. Hello there, how are you? I'm good, how are you guys? We're doing well, doing well. So tell us a little bit about the room or space that you would like help with. I have a guest bedroom in my house and that space has just become like a dumping ground for all of the miscellaneous things that like don't have a place to live yet. So ideally, I would love it to be a place for me to do art projects and practice piano and like just chill and hang out and have it be super cozy and possibly like also have a place for someone to sleep if they were visiting. Right. That makes total sense. I would feel the same way. <laughs> so you do want to have like at least some sleeping area though, right? So like like a small little day bed, would that work for you? Yeah, I think if it's something that I could use as like a couch, like a place to read, but also a day bed when um, people are staying, I think that would be ideal. And then tell us a little bit about your style. My sister-in-law and I decided that my style is uh, boho librarian chic. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm a little bit of like an old lady, but also kind of minimal. Okay, great. Now I noticed there's like a little closet that has no doors. What do you use that for, if anything? So right now I'm using it for random storage. Um, weirdly, my house didn't come with any closet doors and it's not like huge on my priority list to get them, but there's some <laughs> good like built-in storage that I've just thrown some baskets in. Maybe thinking of putting my piano in there to like get it out mm -hmm. of the way. The space itself isn't huge. Um, so I figured if it doesn't have doors, the piano is still super accessible. So it's mostly storage right now, but potentially a piano nook at some point. No, I love that idea. That's the first thing I thought of too. I was like, this could be a good little nook. So I know you mentioned that you describe your style as a little bit boho, but do you have any favorite colors? Because I know boho can kind of go, you know, all over the rainbow. Is there a couple few colors that you'd love to have in the space? Yeah, I found myself decorating a lot with like a darker blush color. So not like a super girly pink, but like a dusty blush. I love dark navy and then like a sagey green color. Those are the ones that I've been using the most in my house. Oh, those are great. I love all of those. I love all of them. <laughs> I think your style is kind of our style, so this is going to be yes, very easy. I think that's why I watch all of your videos, because I'm like, yes, <laughs> this is what I need in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, what's your budget for this project? Um, I would say like somewhere in the 2000 to 2500 range, if I could do the whole room for that. Um, it's bonus season at work, so I'm like, perfect timing to do this. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Okay, yeah, I think that that's a very healthy budget, so I think that we can do it for that or like, decently under. <laughs> cool, that's ideal too. <laughs> We're gonna let you go and we'll come up with a plan together and we'll chat with you a little later on to go through it all with you. Awesome, I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much. Oh, you're so Thank welcome. Thank you, right. talk later. Bye. 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 So next up we're going to talk to Allie who is a 22 year old grad student originally from the West Coast but is currently living in Winnipeg, Manitoba. She likes to bake and play music and loves plants but none of these things are evident on her balcony which is very empty, a little sad and needs some serious help before the spring and summer months. So let's touch base with Allie. Hi Allie, how are you? Good, how are you? We are doing well. 
It looks like you're on your balcony right now. I am. It's surprisingly warmed up a little here. It's a little cool, but um, it's like 10 degrees today. It's awesome. Amazing, perfect. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what you need to have happen with your balcony. I mean, I can just guess, like you want it to be cuter and cozier, but I'll let you take it away. So I just moved here in September, so it was almost winter. I didn't really want to get anything. So I have absolutely nothing in my space. So I kind of want something a little cozier, a little more me, somewhere where I can like sit and do my own stuff, which if things continue, that might happen into the summer when I'll be using it a lot, or fingers crossed, I'll be able to make it a space where I can host my friends and kind of hang out. Totally, amazing. Are there like very specific things you want on there? Like, do you want a couch? Do you want a table? Do you want a barbecue? Yeah, so I have a couple things. I definitely want like some kind of small table um, that I could sit at, like if I wanted to do work outside. Um, some kind of cozy little couch, a barbecue definitely. And um, I was thinking something to kind of make it a little more private. So I'm on the second floor and I face a uh, very unappealing parking lot. So something to just kind of cover that up a little. And then how would you describe your overall style? I kind of have like a quirkier, kind of eclectic style. I, a lot of my stuff is like like personal things that I've collected, like traveling and just like local art and stuff that I really like. So I'm um, kind of like a boho-y with color, but nothing too like bright, but I do like lots of color and a big collection of things that just are all kind of different, but somehow work together, if that makes any sense. Okay, yeah, I totally get that. I get that. Do you have a budget that you're hoping to keep this project at? So definitely under a thousand. However, if we can keep that a little bit lower with different DIY projects and things, I would definitely enjoy that. I think that's all the questions we had. I guess another one is as far as like, are you allowed to drill and stuff? Like I feel like they would not want you to. I just don't, I'm just trying to figure out what we can do about that. I can definitely check in on that and see if they have any more clear rules. Yeah, I think it'd be, it'd be good for you to maybe just ask because I would hate to suggest something that you can't do, but I, I want to do something cool for you too, so maybe just check in. <laughs> okay, awesome. Oh, I had one more question actually. How are your thoughts on plants? Are you a plant person? Do you want to keep them alive? I love plants. I just started kind of getting into plants. This has been like my isolation activity <laughs> uh, because there's this lovely plant store down the street from me that's still open. And so they're doing like safe delivery and pickup. So like every couple days I see that they have a new plant and I just go get a new plant and they bring it home. Um, so I definitely want to have plants. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thanks so much. I'm really excited to see how it goes. Bye. Bye. Right after, Kelsey and I had a quick call to talk about everyone's designs so we could get each other's thoughts on what we want to do with the space and to make sure we were on the same page when designing. Okay, shall we get designing? I was thinking of starting with Ally Space. I have all of her measurements, so the first step is to always draw up a plan. Um, that was so bad. Um, the first step is to always start with a floor plan and luckily she either got this from her landlord or drew it herself, but either way, I am very impressed. I'm very happy about it because I can easily just trace this because it looks like it is to scale. So that just made my life so much easier. So let's talk about the color palette. Basically, Allie has a lot of these rust colored items between the railing and the little like wall units. So instead of fighting with the rust, I'm going to just embrace it. I actually think this rust color is pretty beautiful and we can easily incorporate it into a color palette that really works for the rust. Let's talk about the logistics. She can't really like drill or do anything permanent to the outside of her balcony, which I totally understand. She's renting an apartment. So everything kind of needs to be temporary. So I'm first gonna play around with the layout. I'm thinking of doing the barbecue kind of like close to the front door with a little table over over there and then a sitting area on the other side and although a thousand dollars seems like a healthy budget if you have nothing to begin with and you're starting from scratch it can go pretty quickly one thing I'm thinking is that our friends at article are always down to donate to the cause so I'm gonna reach out to them and ask them if they're willing to donate this beautiful soul day bed I think it would just make the entire space and that way I can really focus on making the other parts really special if we we can get this gifted piece from article. Let me just send her off an email now. 
me sending an email. So she has one outlet and it is there by the front door. So that's where I'm gonna put in some plug-in lighting just because there is no lighting. We're gonna need some lighting out there. I found these little pendant lights, which are really cute. They're the turquoise color, which is perfect. So those can hang out literally over by the barbecue. Now, the only problem is how to hang them up because we can't do any nails or anything in that wood. So I'm going to have to find a solution for how to hang these. Oh, this is gonna work. Okay, so on Amazon, it's an over the door hook, but instead of it going like straight down, it actually goes out like a bracket because you're meant to hang clothing on there. But that's gonna work perfect for our pendant lights because this way the pendant doesn't just like hang against the wall and like lay all awkwardly. It can actually hang out. And this is chrome, but she can easily spray paint this to match her side panel dividers. Oh my God, I'm so excited by this solve. So she has this really ugly AC unit. No offense, it's really ugly. And then I think the best solution to hide this and make it practical is to actually like build a custom table that is basically a standard like wood plank table, but that has a little extra lip at the back so it can fit snugly into the windowsill and cover up all that mess there. This can be like a standing table, it's near the barbecue area, and we can also paint it a fun color or a rust to match all the other rusts that we have going on. Privacy, so, oh my God. One of her like must-haves for the space was privacy, and I'm struggling with this one. And that's because she can't drill or anything into the balcony, so I'm like, how do we hang up curtains? I'm nervous about curtains outside because I don't want them to get all like dirty and gross. So I'm kind of like, what are my options here? You have like bamboo rollouts, things you can do. They're kind of like the stick version of a privacy screen. You can do curtains, like I said. You can do like more of just like simple straight sheets, not so much curtains, but like screens. But I, I don't even know how I found this, but on Amazon, I found, oh, plant stand, okay, anyways. But to distract me from this privacy dilemma I was having, I was like, I'm gonna go look up plants because plants are my favorite thing ever So I start to go look on plant stands and see if I could get you know, maybe a really tall plant stand I end up on Amazon and here I find a plant stand that's gonna work for privacy I see this photo and it's like these two tension roddy pole things kind of like you would find in your shower to hold all of your like shampoo bottles but they're tall they are going to you know hold themselves up between her ceiling and her floor of her balcony it has all these little ledges to put plants on and then they were also draping them back and forth this is Perfect. We get plants, we get privacy. I think it's a great idea. We don't have to drill into anything. I'm so excited. I did not know these existed. I want them in my own house. That is gonna be my main privacy system. This is coming along, people. So, I figured some things out. What did I figure out? Okay, so something really cool that I found online when browsing for patio furniture was this over the railing, fold up, fold down table. I think this is super smart. It can collapse out of the way when it's not needed, but when you're chilling on the day bed or in an ideal world where you can bring out some kind of like floor poofs, maybe this would act as the perfect area to like hold something or sit down and eat. I think that was a super good find. It's crazy what you find when you just start looking. <laughs> Stupid advice. It's crazy what you can find when you just start looking. Maybe it is kind of deep, I don't know. <laughs> And Ali self-proclaimed loves to thrift. So I think this is the perfect opportunity when it's safe to do so, to thrift like a bunch of fun colored pots. Um, I was even specifically thinking, imagine, oh. That's why I thought that, it's right there. I'm picturing this like octagon like table that she could paint kind of like a teal bright fun color or any other color that she has leftover paint from and that would be a good little piece to put in that daybed nook. That's why I was thinking of it. That's so funny. I'm like, oh, I just thought of this genius idea. It's no, I literally am just like looking around the room for inspiration, um, but it still would look good in the space. And any other kind of like wall decor. Um, there are some heavy duty outdoor sticky hooks that you can use that might work on her side panels. I was thinking like a mirror or just like 
any cute little piece that she could use. I did this kind of like drawing of what a side view would look like. And also string lights. I was thinking of framing the window with some light up battery operated globe lights. But yeah, we would have to use like sticky hooks for this. So that's the only problem there. The good news is article is totally down to gift us that day bed. So that just made everything worth it because I wouldn't know what to do without that day bed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so exciting. So Allie's getting the sole day bed from Article. If you guys didn't know, Article has beautiful pieces that you can shop online. They have free shipping if your order is over $999. And if it's under that, you get $49 flat shipping. Or if it's like a small item, it's just 20 bucks. And they do have contactless delivery right now. And definitely check out Article if you haven't already. You get 30 day satisfaction guarantee. And they're always like a great place to go to if you're looking to furnish your home. So. Allie, I think I'm done your patio balcony situation. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, moving on to Kira's space. Again, got the old lappy top on the lap. Oh my God, is that why they call it that? No. You're supposed to use these on desks. I'm losing it. All right, so again, I've got her floor plan kind of mapped out here on the grid. We've got the closet here, piano, piano bench, and that drawer set that we want to keep. So where do I want to start with this? I think I'd love to get a sense of like the color palette and the mood of the room first before I pick furniture for it. So I know she mentioned that she really likes the colors sage green, navy blue, and blush pink. I think we're going to have to pick like one of the colors to be kind of the main color of the space and then use the other two more as accents. Let's go with green and pink. I just like to see how other people do it first to kind of get an idea. Okay, all of these are not a sage. They're like a very green green. Oh, okay. This is closer. Pink couch is fun. Let's search sage green and blush pink will be very specific. <laughs> These colors I really like together. I feel like this is the vibe. It's a way to do those colors that's not like an overwhelming. Her main thing was like, this is gonna be the zen, chill out, inspiration, creative zone. So we want colors that are gonna be really calming and I really like the vibe that this is giving off. I'm gonna paste it here just so we can remember that that's an inspo we're going for. Yeah, this here is really nice. I think the sage green and the pink is a really good color combo. It's like very fresh and inspiring, but also super calming. I love how the couch in this picture is a really nice like velvety green because we need to do some sort of bedding solution here, right? Because this is gonna be a guest bedroom sometimes, but more so just a chill out room for her. I think a futon is the best solve here because then it can be a couch most of the time, but can serve as a bed if it needs to. Whereas opposed to a day bed, I think it's just gonna end up looking too much like a bed. Even if we try and dress it like a couch, it's just gonna give off bed vibes. And if that's not the main use for this room, I think that the futon is better. Wow some great ones right away, which is perfect. I actually love this one. I think this is the exact one that we used for Quicken's room makeover, but we gave it to her in a mustard yellow, which let me just see, mustard yellow. Yeah, this is totally it. And when I saw it in her space, it was so beautiful and like surprisingly very affordable. So I think this is the best one to just recommend for Kira to use as well. So yeah, let's do this in this dark green color. I just like to stick my inspo pictures around like the perimeter of my floor plan just so I always have something to like remind me of the vibe and the mood we're going for here. Okay, first thing though we discussed that I wanna do, which she I think even said and I thought that was a great idea was move the piano into the closet, the doorless closet because that way it's out of the way but also gives the closet like a very defined purpose of like this is the piano nook, which I love. And like look, we just cleared out so much space in the main part of the room. So let me go ahead and draw that futon in so we can see how that's gonna look. Usually my grids are about like a foot per square. So if this is a six foot, Danny, you cannot breathe by the camera. They're gonna hear you. Can you move? Go, go. Go, go. So needy. Is that focused on my face? Oh my god, this whole time if it wasn't. So usually my grid system is like a foot per square. So if this couch is like six feet by three feet, it's six squares by three squares. That looks about right. And then that can go right up against that wall. I'd love to use more of this color in this space too because it is so beautiful. I think what would be awesome is if she painted the closet wall green as well. I'm just wondering, do you do just inside the closet or do you do 
the whole wall. I think you do the whole wall because then it doesn't make it seem like room and then closet. It makes it seem like the closet is just this little inset area to the wall. I think it'll make it flow a lot better. So let's draw in some stage green paint. Now to bring in more of the blushy tones. I think the biggest thing to make this face comfy cozy is like a really nice rug. So let's look up like a blush pink. High pile, is that the word? Fluffy, fluffy rug. Something like this is nice because I don't want it to be all pink. I want it to have a little bit of a pattern or something like this is nice. Yeah, I really like the subtle pattern in this one. This is nice. Okay, I found this one, which is like a shag rug. That's the word I was looking for. Like a really fluffy, it's so nice to just sit on the floor and chill out rug in a blush pink, but still has a little bit of a pattern to it. This is perfect and exactly what I was looking for. And I think it works totally fine with the green. I think they're really nice colors together. It's not something that I like would have immediately thought of, but when she mentioned that she likes those colors, now that I'm seeing it, I think it's really awesome. Yeah, okay, this is gonna be great. And then she also mentions that she's not a desk person, but she does want to do work in this space. So I totally get that. I'm that kind of person too. So I think just a really low coffee table in the center of this rug is going to be perfect for that. You can sit on the floor. Of course, we can add some floor poofs too if we want to. It'll just be a nice way to kind of get that work zone area without putting in a desk. And I'd love to do it in a wood, like a very natural kind of earthy tone keep the whole place feeling like grounded and very calming. It's gotta be something like this where you can put your feet under it. This one's good too. This one's a little bit cheaper, but I don't love the shape of the legs for this space. This one I really like. I like how much you can see the wood grain. I think that looks awesome. So let's go with that one. And let's plop it right in the center of the rug. I know one thing she did mention that was like a dream item for her was to have a swing chair in that room somewhere. I'm just, I'm just curious, you know, could we do one? What would be the cost of one? Like, I don't think we can get away with something like a big egg chair. A, they're really expensive and B, they just take up too much space. Something more along the lines of a macrame one. I mean, obviously this one is so gorgeous, but it's $800. I don't think we can do that. Where are the simple ones? Like I obviously know they exist. Yes, like something like this. And it's surprisingly not that expensive either. And because of the nature of these rope ones, when you're not actually sitting in them, they don't take up too much space because they hang kind of flat. So I think we could get away with putting one kind of on an angle down in this corner. Let's see what that might look like. Oh, that's fun. I like that. I like that for her a lot. Okay, I am loving the vibe of this room and how it's all coming together. It is feeling like so nice and relaxing, all these color tones together. And I think the space is really gonna function well for what she needs. There's a few more things I need to figure out. Like I'd love to give some art or something to that back wall because it's quite empty now. And I want to draw as well some of the things I'm imagining in my head onto real pictures of her space so she can kind of visualize it a little better. Are you excited? So excited! I'm excited too. So I did run into some budget issues. Even though a thousand dollars is such a healthy budget, it just goes so quickly, especially if you have nothing in your space to begin with. Yeah. So yeah. I'll discuss that after, but I'll start with revealing um, the plan to you. So the first thing that I decided was to stick with the rust color as a part of our color scheme. Because there is so much of it, I'd rather work with it than against it. So off of that, I added some colors like mustard greens and a teal to bring the whole thing together. So the first side is like more of the barbecue and like walkthrough area. So I wanna have a barbecue, a pendant light, which can plug into the plug that's right there. And I actually got these over the door hooks that are kind of like more of a bracket that you can hang the pendant off of since we can't really drill into anything. 
I would love for you to DIY a table that can fit into that nook where the window is and the ugly AC unit is. This will cover up the area. It'll act as some surface space if you want to stand there and have a drink or have a bite to eat. And maybe in the future, you can even grab some stools when the budget allows. I want to do two rugs in this space. Jute is a really affordable option, which I did on the table side. And then over on the more loungy side, I picked out this beautiful antique looking rug. So for privacy, I actually found these tension pole plant stands on Amazon. They're super cool. I haven't seen something like this before, but if you can put those up in your balcony space and then actually drape the trailing plants in between them, I think it'll give a good amount of privacy and just look super well integrated into the space. For even more privacy, I was wondering if you could possibly DIY these macrame hanging planters. I found a cool mustard macrame cord instead of your average white cord. And if we're able to hang them off of the upstairs neighbor's railing base, I was thinking that that's a way we could do it. I'll, I'll leave that up to you to see if it works. Obviously you need like a fun loungy area over there. So I found this beautiful soul day bed by article. And then I was thinking that we could add a thrifted side table to that space painted in a really fun color. Another cool piece of patio furniture that I found was this over the railing fold up table. This way we can have it up when you need it for working or eating, but you can have it out of the way if you have some more friends on your balcony. And then of course we wanna bring the whole thing together with some accessories or thrifted items in your color palette. And I was hoping we could use some strong outdoor sticky hooks to frame the day bed area with some twinkle lights. So what didn't fit in the budget was the beautiful day bed there, but our friends at Article are going to gift you that day bed. So what? we're able to make the whole thing work and it all came together in the end. Oh my gosh, no way. Thank you, Article. <laughs> Thank you, Article. Honestly, I love it all. Like, you know when you like find a good hairdresser and they can do things and you're like, just do whatever you want, I don't care. Like, this is what this felt like to me. And like, you nailed it. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, well, great. I'm I'm really excited to see it come to life. I'm so excited about those tension rod plant stands. Yeah, I don't know why I never thought of that. It's like, it seems so simple, but it's perfect. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that's the design. I'll send you those and you can have at it. Yes, I will. I'm excited to get started on it as much as I can in isolation. Mm -hmm. Hopefully soon it will be able to all come to life and I'll be able to visit a hardware store and make a table, but fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Take your time and do it safely. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. All right, well, I will talk to you later and look forward to seeing some photos. <laughs> yes, I will definitely tag you once it's all complete. Sounds good. All right, talk later. Yeah, Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, how are you? Yeah, how are you? I'm pretty good, you know, doing the best we can, being at home. Yeah, oh my god. I'm so excited. So it's a lot, but I'm gonna talk yes. you through everything and break it down. Okay. <laughs> So to start, I want to put this amazing sage green futon up on the back wall to act as seating for you, but will also double as a bed when you have guests over. I really want to carry that sage green color into the rest of the room by doing a fun accent wall that continues into the closet on that side wall. That way it'll make the closet feel like it's more of a part of the room instead of just a separate closet. Speaking of the closet, like you had mentioned, I think it makes a lot of sense to move the piano and the bench into the closet to act as like a little music nook. You already have some amazing floor lamps already, so I'd like to bring one of the lamps into the closet and place it beside the piano. As a fun DIY touch in the piano nook, if you have extra sheet music lying around, you can create a really cool mini gallery wall by framing them or simply just taping them up on that back wall. To really amp up the coziness in here, I found this gorgeous blush shaggy rug that will cover most of the floor space, and it's a great way to bring in some of those blush tones that you mentioned earlier, while also keeping the floor like a comfy area to hang out on. To also help with floor hangouts, I found this beautiful wooden coffee table that can sit on the floor, and if we add in some floor poofs around it, it can act as a great floor seating spot for you to get some work done. You can also dress up the table with like a really pretty vase and some dried grasses in it. I really want to keep that vintage chest of drawers that you have where it is, but above it I'd like to add some simple wooden bookshelves. You can style it with items that you already have that maybe pull in some of the color tones we want to use around the rest of the room. And this is also going to be a great place for you to place all of the books that you have since you mentioned that you really like reading in this space. 
Now the wall above the couch slash futon still feels a little bit empty so I thought an amazing DIY you could do that could bring in some life and texture instead of just simple art is a greenery vine wall. I found these pretty realistic faux vines on Amazon and I'm imagining that you hang the faux potted plant on the ceiling to the left and then carry the vine trails out onto the rest of the wall. It's going to be really easy to use some tiny little sticky hooks and then just clip the vines to it to create this cool sprawling pattern across the wall. The window also needed some dressing up so I found this beautiful white linen curtain and a rod which can get hung above the window. From what I can tell, your current light in the room is just a plain, simple bulb, so I'd love to add in some of that boho, rattan, earthy tones by installing this beautiful basket effect lampshade to the bulb that you already have. And one final thing I know you mentioned to us in your email was that you were really hoping for a swing chair somewhere. I found this really pretty affordable one and I imagine that you can hang it kind of in the corner. It's a great place to just sit, obviously it looks awesome and cool, and if you've always wanted one, I say, why not? Let's make this your dream room. And lastly, beside the swing chair, you can place the other floor lamp that you already had as well. I love this so much, like I can't wait to get started. I'm so excited to see it. So I just wanted to talk about budget for a second. So all of these things actually do come in under budget, but we thought one thing that maybe felt a little more like a luxury item in this case was the swing chair. So as a little gift and thank you, we are actually going to gift you the swing chair and a cushion for it. Oh my god! These are the best! <laughs> That's so nice, thank you so much. You are so welcome. We we wanted to make sure that like this space was the best it could be and you got everything out of it that you wanted to, so we wanted to help in any way that we could. Oh, that's amazing, you guys are so nice. And so because this is still under budget for what you had asked for, um, if there's any area that you maybe wanted to um, like hire an expert for, I know hanging the chair, totally, I'm sure you're capable of it, but it just to make sure that it's safe and you don't fall, right. if you felt like you wanted to bring on someone to help do that, I think there's definitely room in the budget left for you to do that. Stop. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Oh my god, that's such a nice surprise. You're so welcome. I this was so fun to do. Like I I love how I think it's gonna turn out. I can't wait to see it and I hope you have fun trying to tackle it. Thank you. I feel like this room was stressing me out because I didn't know how to make it what I want. So now I'm just like so excited. Thank you guys so much for your help. I so appreciate it. This is all right, you're so welcome. Have a wonderful week. You too. Alrighty. Bye. Bye. That went so well and everyone is so so like happy with like how the room turned out and I think everyone's really grateful for like the, the surprise gift element which I love. I feel like a little fairy godmother being able to add that in which has it's been really fun. I can't wait to see how these rooms turn out. This was so much fun to do. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today and watching. We had so many great submissions, so the next episode of Design and Conquer Virtuals Making Over Our Subscriber Spaces is already in the works. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on upcoming episodes where we reveal and react how these spaces turned out. See you next time. Meh.